Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Compensating the Leakage Inductance in the Basic DC-DC Transformer. I'd like to thank Alex Gertzman for pointing out to this uh, compensating method that I'm going to discuss in uh, this uh, presentation. And please note that this uh, presentation is actually a follow-up and I'm going to put the link on the YouTube page of the video that you are now watching. Now, in the previous presentation, I was discussing a very simple DC to DC transformer, which is very compatible with requirements of a high side drive for transistor, MOSFET transistor, as a power supply for the high side drive. And it is basically a driver, a transformer, and a rectifier. So we have a square wave here, being transferred to the secondary, rectified, and we get a output voltage. A major problem with this uh, simple power supply is the leakage of the transformer, because if the leakage is large, then you have to charge and discharge it during each of the cycles, and consequently, you will lose some of the current, and therefore, you'll have a drop of the output as a function of the load current. Unfortunately, the leakage is conflicting with another requirement we had, and that is to have a very low capacitance between the windings here to avoid injection of spikes from the secondary back to the primary. And then to get this low capacitance, you have to put the windings away. Once you do that, you get a larger leakage. So there is a problem here between these two opposite requirements. The idea that I'm going to show in this presentation is to put a capacitor in series with the transformer. Okay, it will be here. So this actually converts it to sort of series resonant converter. Okay, the idea is of course that at resonance, if the frequency, the drive frequency is the resonant frequency, this is sort of a short and then you have a transfer function or transfer ratio of one. This our AC represent the load in the so-called first harmonic approximation. So this is the idea that I'm pursuing here, and I'm going to show some of the simulation result of various configurations. So here is the basic LTSPI schematics. We have the transformer. I've put here leakage. This will be change. This is the coupling coefficient. I've put here some of the resistances, something like 70 milliohm, and then I have the full wave rectifier. This is the filter capacitor, and here I have the load, and here is the resonant capacitor. So the first thing to do is to find out what capacitor do we need. Actually, I can calculate it from knowing the coupling coefficient. So this is for the case of coupling coefficient of 0.97, so I have like 3% leakage, but if I refer it to the secondary, that'll be like 6% leakage, or I can run a simulation in which I've put here a capacitor, I put here a resistor, so the quality factor will be reasonable, and I've selected various values, and this is shown for the 70 nanofarad case with the transformer that I've chosen and the 0.97. And you see we have here two resonances, one at very low frequency. This is due to this uh, coupling capacitor. And then I have another resonance. This is what I've chosen this capacitor to be. So the resonance will be at 100 kilohertz because I'm going to run it at 100 kilohertz. And here are some initial results. We see the output voltage. We see the diode current. This is one of the rectifier diodes. And we see the primary, secondary of the transformer, very typical of a resonant converter. Very, very neat, of course. We have here like uh, zero current switching, which is very nice. If I change the capacitor from 70 to 50 nanofarad, Performance is just about the same, except that I have here a void here. There's nothing is really happening. But if I look at the output, and here is the, the output with the original capacitor, the difference is very small. So really uh, changing the capacitor, making it smaller, really doesn't matter that much. 
we'll see it a little bit later. If I compare it to the case of no capacitor, that is a regular configuration without a resonant capacitor, we see here typically the current of the transformer will be like rising up and down because of the current of the inductor and here is one of the diodes we see the current going up it's not finishing so therefore you are losing some of the voltage at the output and you can see that in this particular case for this particular load there is quite a bit of a drop okay as compared to what we've seen before we'll see it a little bit later but here we see quite a bit of a drop indicative of what is really happening here due to the problem that we have of charging and discharging the leakage inducted. So here is a summary of some of the results, some of the simulation. This is the case of 50 nanofarad resonant capacitor 0.97 and I'm comparing the case of the resonant circuit which is this green one with resonant capacitor with no capacitor this is the voltage and this is the output current okay here we have the load okay from a very heavy load of uh, 10 ohm to uh, 10 kilo ohm, just about open circuit okay and what we see here is that uh, for this uh, case we see that at no load we get just about the input voltage because the drive is plus minus 12 volt and then as uh, we are loading it with the current here and then uh, um, smaller and smaller load resistor there is a drop at the beginning they seem to be just about the same but then uh, there is quite a discrepancy the resonant holds on very nice the resonant uh, configuration up to here now this break is not really real it's due to the fact that i've chosen discrete value to generate this curve so it's a, it's a continuous curve but only for the fact that I have like 10 ohm and then 33 and then a hundred and therefore there is sort of like a break but in fact it is like a continuous line uh, as far as the current goes okay this reflects the voltage of course and we see that uh, at, at the maximum load we can get just about close to one amp in this particular case and uh, for this, the drop in the resonant is heavy, it's 8 volt, but uh, in the no resonant case, in the regular case, the drop is just uh, unacceptable, of course. Now, if I compare the case of a coupling coefficient of 0.97 to 0.99, which would be a very nice transformer, with a 1% leakage on one side, as compared to 3 here, so there will be more tight coupling but again the interwinding capacitance will be here larger but nonetheless if I compare these two I see that again at the very beginning it's not that much different but you see that as you go to higher and higher current and higher and higher loads then the resonant holds very nicely very very nicely while the uh, no resonant or the regular configuration sort of drops very much so if i compare the 0.97 to 0.99 case i see that at the very beginning they are behaving just about the same here there is a better agreement between the resonant and non-resonant but as you see uh, we can get to much higher current without a drop here with the resonant also it's improving the non-resonant case but of course the overall performance here is much much better than that clearly here we need a larger capacitor because the leakage inductance is smaller so for the same resonant frequency we need a larger capacitor now another benefit of the resonant circuit is regarding the duty cycle now what I've shown up to now is duty cycle of 50% or just about 50% here I've changed it to 0.4 so you see that in the case of the resonant circuit we have just about the same response here we are getting a higher voltage at this end well the drop again is similar as before but what I'm emphasizing now is this portion here that you had a higher current this is explained in the video that I've referenced uh, there is a reason for that 
that when the duty cycle is not 50%, you may get a higher voltage due to the fact that uh, you have a higher uh, voltage of one of the half cycles and therefore uh, you'd expect a higher voltage overall. And this is of course not very desirable. Now, I'm showing here a case in which I've changed the resonant capacitor and for different load resistors. Okay, starting with a 50 ohm resistor and then 100 and then 10K. At 50 ohm, we have sort of a regular response, I might say. You see the whole change is uh, between 11 point, uh, say, five, three, to just about 11, and for a very large change of capacitance. Here and here, however, we got something strange. Around the 70 nanofront, which is the resonant uh, capacitor required for 100 kilohertz, we see here a peak. In the case of 100 ohm, this is not too bad. But in the case of the open circuit, you might say, 10 kilo ohm, it's fairly high. Actually, it's dangerous. So uh, there is a problem here. And the question is why? So to understand it, I'm running here a simulation. But in this case, I've not used a coupling coefficient. Rather, I've put here an ideal transformer. And I've put here outside an inductor to represent the leakage. Okay, it's uh, 3% on uh, both sides, so it's 6%, 36 microhenry. So this represents the leakage. The reason that I'm doing this, I like to show here, and I'm showing it here, the voltage between the drive before the resonant circuit and the output. There is a step here which is causing this resonant response, okay? And the step is due to the change in the voltage across this ideal transformer. And here it is. We see this step here. This is this step here, between here and here. And this is what is actually driving the resonant to produce this uh, peak current, okay? Now we see here some irregularity. This is due to the switching, due to the diode, some reverse uh, current. So this all these affect the response. And this is now for the case of a 100 volt, where the quality factor, Q, of the whole circuit is not that large because they fairly heavy loading. However, if I go to sort of an open circuit, so the quality factor is much, much higher, you see that we have oscillation. These oscillations are between this uh, leakage and the diode capacitances. Okay, it's a different frequency, much higher of course, because the capacitors are very low. And due to this parasitic oscillation, we are getting injection of voltage to the output, which is causing this problem of a higher voltage. So it's not the first harmonic, you might say, or the, ma the major waveform, but rather a parasitic effect here. Now you can overcome it in a number of ways. One of them is to put a Zener diode, okay, just to clamp here. And in fact, this is a good practice, of course, to protect, because this eventually goes to the gates of the MOSFET, so you'd like to protect it. And so I've put here at 30.5 volt. The drive is 12, so ideally you'll get a 12 volt, although there are voltage drops of the diode, so you're supposed to get something like 11 something. So 13 is, seems to be a good number, also it'll protect, uh, you know, regular MOSFET would have something like 15 volt drive as a good operating point. So here it is, and here is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing here the drive. This is now the drive, this is the step. Now the oscillations are damped because uh, they are actually energy is absorbed into this zener. We see the injection of the current to the output. You see we lost here the resonant circuit because the amount of current that is required here is very, very small. So it is just a small short pulse here and that's it. So it's not a sinusoidal waveform anymore. And 
Of course, there is some energy goes into the Zener diode because it's absorbing these uh, spikes here. But the current here is only like 2 milliamp, which is uh, not too bad. Okay, so if you need, you can actually put a Zener. Again, it's a good idea to put a Zener anyhow for protection. And of course, uh, perhaps the better way is even to go to a lower capacitance because uh, then you are sure that uh, the, the, you are not going to have this uh, problem as we have seen in the simulation. So what are the conclusions here? First of all, we see that a series capacitor can indeed compensate the attenuation due to the leakage inductance of the transformer, that is the voltage drop as the load current is increasing. And also that operating off resonant with a smaller capacitor is, uh, I think, a good idea. Does not seem to cause any problem, but it's also protecting the circuit against these uh, parasitic oscillations. I should add that, in my opinion, having a capacitor which is larger may not be a good idea, because I think that if the capacitor is larger than resonant, then you might have hard switching, or harder switching, I should say, then you have at resonant or below resonant. So the losses of the switching transistor, if you use a bridge or half bridge, will be higher. I'm not showing it in this presentation, but this is the point to consider. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.